Well, hello there, YouTube, and welcome to a noticeably cooler this morning, 48 degree, um, Tuesday, March the 29th. I just love the look of a freshly plowed field. Man, he does that every year, and he gets the luscious grass for his cattle out there. It's really nice. He spends a lot of, a lot of money and time, but with beef prices and stuff nowadays <laughs> the payoff is huge it's crazy hear the morning does out there just carrying on if you get quiet and you don't make any noise they get really loud they're all over the place all around you you get this 360 sound of morning doves <laughs> anyway feels wonderful out here Though a little cool, fog is thick enough, it almost feels like a, a sprinkle. We'll go out here and bust out a, a brand new day. What y'all think of that? Where's all that sunshine, mama? I don't know. <laughs> all right, let's bust it out. It's amazing just how many trains we see, even when only one track's open, because they're still working on them. All the trains you see moving back and forth. So where are all these guys when I go on my little train train hunting expeditions? There's the locomotives up front there. You can see through the misty windshield. It was a nice pleasing drive to work today. It was. It was. No crazy. Wow. Some less than smart people, but yeah. nothing crazy. <laughs> amazing people do going down the road. I know. Holy moly. entertaining. Yep. Crazy. <laughs> I, you you got to just stop hitting the save button on there. You save so many weird things on the, on the dash cam. I know. It is like, one of these times we'll do a huge compilation. Yeah. It's crazy. But anyway, Mama, we'll start off a Tuesday. All right, sounds Let's good. Let's go in there and bust her out. All right. All right. Have a wonderful day there. You too, honey. All right. Love you. See you. Bye. I love you. <laughs> bye, bye bye now. This is the Riker 600. I told you I was finishing up. I got to put the oil filter in it and uh, top her off. Uh, coolant. I need to top that off a little bit too. That's a CVT filter. We did not have another one. We have them on order. They just haven't come in yet, but it looks like there's um, an ETA or something now. So but anyway, that's blown out. That thing really dirty. CVT, that's your clutch. The engine side was like almost like it was recently replaced. It was really clean. You can't see down in there. I don't want to pull the whole thing out, but... The other side is, this is the engine side, so the air is coming through this way. But it's surprising that's, I know the CVT sucks a lot of air. That one goes through the snorkel around the other side to the throttle body. I'll leave the cover off, it just makes it easier getting the oil filter back in, which is right there. Um, typical thing, man, The one of the tender leads was underneath the battery post. Matthew was riding a Suzuki yesterday, bringing it down. All he's doing is putting tires on it. Boom! Thing just shut off on him. All lights, cycle the key, nothing. Completely dead. Um, found a tender lead under, I think both of them were on, but I think the negative side did the typical thing. It corroded and arced and just shut the bike down. That will, that has the potential of ending you. Imagine going down the road and you lose all power. That means you have no brake lights, no nothing. Yeah, bad news. Never, ever. The high tension lead always goes directly against the post. Any accessories go on the outside. And don't leave these loose. It's crazy how often I see them things loose. A loose terminal can have the same effect. But this side was missing, had some hardware bolt in there, and it was just floundering loose. And the strap was loose, and I think the battery was floundering around. And it snapped the lid. The little 
this little clip thing. Hmm, not there. So anyway, I'm a they had duct tape holding everything down. I've got a I've seen this before. <laughs> I've got a little trick of putting a zip tie in there to get them going until they can get a new cover. And then I've got this uh, 2016 GS. Fairly, fairly good service. It's brake fluid flush and all that stuff. And uh, rear brake pads. They always go through rear brake pads. Cool. Gonna be a fun day. Let's take this lovely gal. My little zip tie trick. <laughs> and you loop it in a way that, you know, somebody can reach in with a, with something and cut the zip tie. If you needed to get in there, I put the part numbers for the, uh, um, hood, hood and the, uh, logo. My mind was somewhere else as I was thinking about that. These little 600s run so good. They're sitting here purring on my bench, doing the preliminary oil check. Anyway, I'll be right back when I'm on the other side. Oh, see the white markings all over out here? That's for the uh, electric fence opener that we're getting. That fence is actually one that, uh, <laughs> you go a little wider, you might be able to see what's around the turn there, buddy. At least he wasn't flying. <laughs> it always cracks me up, people that take a really tight turn on a corner they can't see around. I think everybody, literally everyone, should have to take a road race course, whether it be for cars or whatever. <laughs> There's a lot to be learned there, a lot about cornering. They teach you a lot, both in the car and the motorcycle. I would prefer you do the motorcycle one. That's way more fun. <laughs> Ooh, ah, and I missed it too. See, that's one of the dangers of being right on the butt of someone like that. You don't see those kind of things until they present themselves. And uh, there's the perfect example. Provided to you by moi. <laughs> service on this thing. It's a bummer about the hood. But I'm venturing to, unless, you know, someone opened it didn't know what they were doing. Definitely seen that, but if you've had this thing for 7,300 miles, I'm pretty sure you know how to take your, excuse me, your access hood on and off. Or maybe they didn't because somebody newly put a tender lead in there. We definitely see people yank on them and it snaps them right off. They meant to just, you, you lift a little tab on each side, you stick your finger in there, go left and right, pull it, slide it forward, and she's in your hand. You lift up, you get a whole nother result. <laughs> Very quickly. Filling in. It's the start of all of those beautiful leaves that we see each year. It'll be like big old shade trees out here before you know it. Love that springtime. Things are all coming in. It's like a birth of a new year. Of a new riding season. <laughs> it's a blooming all over. It's 
service on these things aren't aren't bad you know we go through everything like we do actually you know looking at the actual service sheet <laughs> i actually do end up doing more than what it the services except for the 12k when you're replacing you know fuel filters and um, checking the belt and stuff like that that one i think it's about twice as long of a service as this there's a lot you do you gotta lift if you ever taken a belt cover off one of these things it's it's not just a snap of the finger it's all right I think the last three Rikers I've ridden have all been 600s. I'll probably be shocked the first time I ride 900. Or I won't remember the difference and they all just kind of feel the same. Literally the one thing I notice between the two is uh, obviously the sound. The uh, 900s are smoother, but to me that's, uh, that's going the other way. I like the rumble that the 600s have way more than the 900s but you get that kind of a cool triple exhaust note out of it and the second thing i notice is uh you can't keep the back tire from spinning if you're even slightly aggressive on your takeoff lights a book <laughs> But when you're just doing normal riding, I don't know the difference. We got people asking all the time, can you take it down the freeway? Yeah. It's not the most comfortable thing. I haven't ridden any of the new ones where the clutch has been altered to drop the speed. You know, once you're at an upper speed, drops the, drops the RPMs. You know, when I was pointing out them bushes, I think I was pointing out the wrong house. They're still small. But, um, the first couple years of the Riker, your RPMs pretty much matched your mileage. 70 was 7,000 RPMs. And you get the newbies that literally don't know anything. Oh my God! I couldn't have something to rev down the road like that. Dude, these motors were designed for the snowmobiles and they live life wide open. You know how many snowmobiles come in for engine problems? Yeah, none. Same with the watercraft. The only thing the watercraft come in for is uh drive shaft issues and stuff like that or they're souping them up you know and uh and then they're causing problems yeah no problems and they're like your lawnmower and your generators they pretty much live wide open they're designed to live wide open they just live and live and live Take our little loop down here. I do a little spin around. Looks like a street sweeper tried to come through here and clean it up. Missed most of it. That might be why he pushed it out there. Maybe he knows a street sweeper comes through and clears this lot out. campfire and if you smell a campfire around here it's uh, probably not the kind of campfire you're thinking about it's probably going from the <laughs> other side over there but you know it always smells so good I've had people comment boy the smell down there has got to be horrible uh, no actually you smell nothing like you think you might smell I mean they got porta potties and everything else out there 
and um, what you smell is people either a campfire kind of smell or people cooking something and that is wonderful alright and get in there do a service on a R1200 GS and uh, we'll have a moment we'll take you for a test ride on that as well <laughs> I'm gonna paddle shift the thing <laughs> in the neutral not today. Not on a Riker. <laughs> All right. Well, we made it out of work. But look at Kelly sitting there by the American flag. It's America, man. Speaking of America, look at this old Kenworth that just rolled in. Ah. Oh, it reminds me of being a kid right there. The old long nose, we called him. It's actually nicer here in Toledo than it was in Vancouver. It's hard to believe, huh? And it's still, yeah, it's still 57 degrees. It's cooling off just enough that it feels good. Oh, thank God. I don't know, I can't tell you how often I do this. I reach down there to turn that godforsaken, open the trunk lid or the fuel thing and I <laughs> hit the, hit the uh, hood. Hear that clunk, and I go, dang it, Kelly, I've done it again. Because they're sitting right on top of each other, and I just reach down there and grab one. Well, sometimes it's the wrong one. <laughs> Holy moly. All right. Ooh, went down again. Went at 479 last time. Nice. Well, hello there, you do. Man, these long evenings, man, I don't even know what to do. It's We're doing nice. the goodbye. We just took some groceries and stuff in, and doing it quick because there's a cloud right in front of the sun. Otherwise, yes. we got to wait till it's not blasting us in the face, and or then it's too dark. Find some other spot. Setting. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> that uh, BMW. I didn't get it. I mean, I'm so close, but I didn't get it finished. I had a couple interruptions there, so we'll we'll take that for a quick test ride. And got another cool BMW. I'll talk about tomorrow. It's kind of cool. Nice. One of several. Yeah. We'll, we'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> but on that, I think we're going to bail out, enjoy the rest of this evening, and um, at some point start a vlog. Sounds start good. it all over again tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Alrighty. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. We really do appreciate it. We will talk to you tomorrow. Same smoke time, same smoke channel. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up. You guys have a wonderful Wednesday or Thursday. Thank you. Appreciate you guys watching. Yes. We'll see you in the morning. See you then. <laughs> bye bye now. Bye.